Now then, despite what you may have heard over the weekend, this is the real record of the year. Ladies and gentlemen, Justin Hawkins. <laughs> So, I believe in a thing called love. It is the record of the year, isn't it, Justin? I think our seasonal single is going to be the record of the year. Yeah, you've brought out a Christmas single. Mm. Which is, um, it's something that people don't really do anymore, proper rock bands. Slade done it, didn't they? Yeah, but Who that else? was 30 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> it's a thing that people always say about, and you're probably slightly sick of hearing it, but this thing about that you don't, people don't feel you take the music seriously enough, and. You seem to be just I think pissing about. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah. there, are, there are folk in bands who kind of take themselves really seriously. They climb right up their own assholes and they become really dour folk who, who make tepid music. And that's not what we want to do. We want to sort of divide people and be bombastic and kind of be right in your face and have as much fun as possible doing it. Yeah. Well, it works. Yeah. <laughs> I'm wondering if it works. <laughs> well, I'll be honest with you. I, I went through, like, Three stages with the darkness. When I first saw you in the... We've got a picture of, of the band with you in a, in a cat suit. There. <laughs> they always call it a zany cat suit, don't they? I mean, is there such a thing as a normal cat suit? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a but, nice conservative yeah. cat suit. <laughs> <laughs> Just keeping it simple, yeah. Just black cat suit, <laughs> open chest, obviously. But I thought oh, th this must be like a bit of a shawaddy waddy type. <clears throat> Band, you know what I mean? I think we're more like mud. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but then I heard the album and I thought, actually, this has got like proper good rock songs on it, well written and all that kind of stuff. I think if you look beyond the outfit. Yeah. But then there, I saw you live and it all fell into place, Justin. Yeah. Now there's quite a story behind the album because I understand at first nobody wanted to bring it out. They wouldn't, to use an ex coin a phrase, it would be, they wouldn't have touched us with yours or mm. whatever, you know, they. they Everyone in the industry has known about us since My barge one. bowl. Yeah, yeah, sorry. <laughs> your, your proverbial shitty stick. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think you've got me mixed up with Billy Bob Thorne. I don't know where I'm going. <laughs> yeah, no, everybody in the music trade has known about us since day one. Um, and everyone ignored us or ridiculed us or a bit of both. And uh, so we just sort of cracked on and kept doing what some people lovingly term as cock rock. Yeah. You know. I think it was Peacock Rock. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, it sort of got to the point where we had to make our own album. And so we had to pay for it and record it really quickly and um, just get it out. But it's a massive <coughs> risk, isn't it, to pay for your own album? Um, well, we saw it as a valuable investment, really, because we recognised that what we were doing was important. And on one level, whether you think we're taking the piss. <laughs> Right. <laughs> or not, you know, it's, um, we always believed in it, so it kind of didn't seem like that much of a sacrifice, really. Yeah, well, now, I understand that your job at the time was you wrote jingles for adverts and things. Yeah, that's, well, that's how we funded it. I mean, I, I did IKEA, Mars Bars, Tango, HSBC, Pop Stars, the first series. The, the, now, I've, I've got the IKEA jingle that you wrote. Mm -hmm. Are you singing on this as well? This is the schlomping one. Yeah. You are? <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. Well, this is, this is the um, IKEA schlomping advert. Schlomping is for you. Schlomping is for me. We're a schlomp. Be at one with the gravity. Uh -oh. It brings the heat up my spine and the pleasure is all mine. A little less rigidity. A little more recline. Starts with an S, ends in a D. Now that sounds like Justin Hawkins taking the piss out of Justin Hawkins, if you know what I mean, because you obviously are deliberately singing badly on that one. Yeah, I, I mean, that was the brief. I mean, the original ones I did for them were, I was singing too good. I said it. Um, you know, can... people <laughs> tell me that all the time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, see, you have to sort of dumb down, really, for the IKEA audience. You know, this uh, Scandinavian furniture doesn't always correlate with great singing. Yes. <laughs> you know, I've often thought that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's been said before, obviously. But... <laughs> 
Are you worried now that, that now you're becoming famous that they might start the, the paparazzi the witch start, hunt? Yeah, they'll start sniffing the around to find secrets from your past. And yes, all that. and they, they are doing so. Are they? I mean, yeah, I mean, one of the things they were doing was um, apparently they camped out, uh, this is News of the World, apparently they camped outside um, uh, Noddy Holder's house. <laughs> Why? Because, <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, it's, they've, they understand that I had a relationship with his daughter, right? And might have kissed her in a pub six years ago, but that's the extent of the story, and it's kind of... Why can't... If they want to know something, why can't they come to me? That's the, that's the thing, you know? Wow. Because I'd rather find it second-hand and then sensationalise it. I mean, my cancer scare... Oh, yeah. Oh. Imagine, imagine my horror when I discovered I had throat cancer <laughs> by reading the star. You know. It's a terrible way to break it to yeah. someone. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I, I just give it to me straight. All right, you'll get it first thing in the morning. Kind of <laughs> through your letterbox. So you didn't have sex with Noddy, oldest daughter? <clears throat> no. Would have been. That would have been taking that 70s thing a bit too far. I think far, it would have been the it? wedding of the year, though. Oh, honest. it would have been a fantastic. Yeah. Imagine the glam rock extravaganza. <laughs> <laughs> we, have a, we have a picture of you in sporting attire, <laughs> um, playing in the uh, soccer sixes. <laughs> there you go. Uh-huh. So how did you get on in that? We beat um, One True Voice. And they had... <laughs> <laughs> what a pretty nice nice image. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Narrowly missed out on a hat trick. It doesn't matter. Anyway, we'll... <laughs> <laughs> um, Blue were unbeatable. They, no one had scored against them. Um, until they met us in the quarterfinals. Mm. And uh, I think we were losing 5 0 or something, and I, and I got one. And uh, you could hear a pin drop in St James's Park. It was like an OA goal in a European match or something. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> so I took that opportunity to take my shirt off, swing it round, and sort of really give it some. And then all these 13 year old girls are going, Wanker! <laughs> <laughs> so, quite, a, quite a moving experience, really. <laughs> I couldn't really fault them on it, though, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, you have, a, as you, you have a, a Christmas single out. People used to call us a panto band, which we... Ooh, yeah. So the way to hit back is a Christmas single. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not only that, but what is it called, Justin? <laughs> well, it's Christmas time. Don't let the bells end. <laughs> this is a, a joyous thing. <laughs> Come on, kids, is the new. Oh. It's Christmas. <laughs> no, that's, uh, that's, it is. Come yeah. on, kids, is the catchphrase now, isn't it? And when does that. Is that out now? No, it's out on the 15th. Okay. December. So, um, are you now at the stage of what they call the difficult second album? When a band brings out this big hit album and then you think, shit, now we've got to do another one. Mm. How's that going? <clears throat> I think difficult is probably the understatement of the millennium. So far. Thank you very much. <laughs> it's, it's, um, the problem, the ba battle we've got is trying to find time to write, because I've always said that an album should be a document that states where a band is at at that point, and it should be written over a period of about six weeks, recorded in two, and you should do one a year, like all the decent bands used to in the glory days. Yeah. Um, but, I don't, you know, I've, I've got a nasty feeling we'll end up touring this one until to the point of you know, just ramming it down people's throats to, to the point everyone's totally sick of us, and then the second album will take five years, because none of us are human beings anymore, and we were human beings when we wrote that album, and I'd like to be a human being when we write the next one. That was quite serious, wasn't it? It was an optimistic mm. view. <laughs> yeah, well, to be honest, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a jovial, happy-go-lucky character in a zany cat suit normally. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is your night off. Yeah. <laughs> Thought so, I'd spend it with you. Well, there was that. Thank you. <laughs> Honour and privilege. OK, well, um, best of luck with it. Um, I hope you get the Christmas number one. That would be a massive step in the well, right direction. Well, it would direction. be the, the best Christmas ever, wouldn't it? I think so. Yeah. For us both. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Justin Hawkins. <laughs> <laughs>